TB Photo X1.5 TFX and welcome back to another video. Well, we're back again with the Sony HDR CX 900E. Well, say that three times fast, but anyway. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I did a little bit of a walkabout in town. I thought I would test this camera out then to see, uh, you know, ease of use and so on, uh, to see what I thought of it. And um, yeah, I found a, a couple of nitpicks uh, that I don't really enjoy that much, but um, all in all, I think that they actually, it, uh, yeah, surprisingly good actually. So what, what's what about it? Well, <clears throat> Uh, it has that, uh, you know, Sony XAVCS uh, codec to record the uh, video on it. And um, as talked about before, you have the controls here for iris, gain, and shutter speed, which can be both put onto manual, semi automatic, or fully automatic. Uh, in other words, you can have it all be controlled by the camera itself, which could be equivalent to a program mode, uh, but you can also have it uh, so that you control it mostly yourself. I'm one of those that want to control most of it myself, actually. So you have also the focusing dial up here, or rather it can be focused or zoom. Uh, you put it between manual and uh, automatic with this little button here, depending on what this switch is set to. And uh, you have the classic rocker switch here on the back and the uh, begin recording in the back here as well. Um, yeah, there's basically two ways you can view the preview of this camera. Either you have the flip out uh, screen that is probably most commonly used. Uh, and also, yeah, when you flip it out, it will, the, com the camera starts up uh, automatically. But what you also have is uh, this little viewfinder that you pull out and uh, push pull up as well. Uh, you have a diopter control here also for if you're like me that you need glasses. But anyway, as stated, so there are a couple of options there for how you want to view the image as you record. But um, yeah, what else is there? Uh, another thing that I found is that you have the three stages of neutral density filter here on the back in order to, you know, if you are out in broad or bright sunlight and the iris control doesn't give you what sh the look that you're out for. Uh, for instance, some people, uh, you want a shallow depth of field to get that uh, bokeh or bokeh background. You can do this with this camera or you have the ISO slash gain. This can actually go from minus uh, to minus three decibels uh, of uh, denoise or whatever you want to call it. But you have a few options there. And shutter speed, I mean, for my purposes, what I filmed with this camera when I was out yesterday, I basically used uh, uh, 25p, which is 25 pic frames per second, and uh, keeping with the 180 rule of cinematography, I use a shutter speed of uh, 1 50th of a second, which is basically uh, the generic movie quality look, or rather the cinematic look, uh, from what I've been able to gather in my limited experience with those things. Um, but that's about it. A couple of things that I was a little bit peeved about was that the um, on-camera microphone for this one uh, can either be doing two-channel stereo or a five-in-one uh, system where you both have stereo front, stereo back and uh, like a mid uh, forward facing uh, microphone, but that's, uh, that doesn't work. You need to uh, record in HV, AVCHD mode. You can't really use that in XAVCS, at least not on this make and model camera. So that's a little bit of a peeve. Uh, might have to do with the right speed that is need required and that the camera might not be able to process 
video and audio in the same manner when you use that type of codec. But that's just me speculating. Uh, anyway, yeah, you have the removable lens hood as such. There we go. And you have the lens cover. Yeah, I'll get that later. <clears throat> a little bit of a fail on my part, but anyway. You have a 62 millimeter filter thread on the front of the Carl Zeiss glass on this camera. So uh, I actually had my little camera bag with me. I did bring a tripod, which unfortunately I don't have with me here at the moment. But it's uh, uh, easy to carry around Manfrotto tripod. So yeah, but anyway, <clears throat> I thought that uh, here you go, I have this uh, Kokin filter holder, I think it's the P version, and um, I have a little bit of a step down ring arrangement for this, uh, for the time being, so that I can take it down to a 60, 162 millimeter filter thread. So yeah, this filter holder can actually have up to three filters simultaneously on this camera. So that's a little bit of a gadget that I would actually recommend, especially for video work, since uh, you might want to uh, you get a some specific effect in camera. Nah, not gonna bother with that one. There we go. Uh, so yeah, the camera has a three-stage built-in ND filter. But the problem with those are that they are solid. So in some of the clips you might see it, I am trying to expose a scene uh, where you have a part of sky in the upper part of the image and then you have just a landscape or scenic scape in the lower part of the image. So in that aspect, the neutral density filters built into the camera might not be sufficient for you getting the type of uh, result that you're aiming for. So I brought this little pack with me and what is this? Well it's uh, a couple of neutral density filters for video work and stills. So these are graduated neutral density filters. They are in a couple of different strengths. These I got you know second hand for basically not much money at all. But they are a good little investment, uh, especially for when you are doing film. So yeah, a kit, a little set of neutral density filters are something I would probably recommend you get for a video camera, dedicated video, especially graduated uh, neutral density filters in order to get that gradient. So if you have sky in the upper part and a little bit more close uh, scene in the bottom, you can have a neutral density filter that is graduated in order to get uh, the sky in a good exposure and then the main scene uh, in a good exposure as well. And another filter that I think is a little bit of a good filter to have in a video setting since Uppsala is very famous for having the river Fyris Oan running through it um, and in the harsh midday sun and so on you can get a lot of nasty reflections so one of these filters might be a good investment as well this is probably one of my favorites in my bag of tricks it's a Prisma 62 millimeter uh, PL or rather these this is a so-called CP filter or circular polarizing filter. So you screw it onto the camera and then you actually turn it in order to get a get the effect of the circular polarizing. So to be aware with this, you basically have to have the sun if uh, you're filming uh, right forward like this, the sun has to go from either the right or left side of the camera. So at a 90 degree angle to the subject. That's when the circular polarizing filter will work its magic uh, the most effectively. So that's another little bit of a 
piece of kit that I would really recommend anybody who is out doing video in the summertime and in the wintertime when you have a lot of snow. So that's basically two of the filters. So graduated neutral density filter, circular polarizing filter, and one more little thing in the bag of tricks. Uh, here I have a little bit of a selection of graduated color filters, which can be a little bit fun. So you have here, I have a rainbow plethora here, purple, uh, well, this is some kind of pink, I believe, orange, red, yellow, uh, green, and blue. So this is basically the kit that I think is a good little, a good little kit for the avid video shooter outside. Um, so yeah, neutral density filter, graduated, a circular polarizing filter, and a kit of some different color filters and of course also the trusty lens hood to get rid of flaring and so on so well if you're not if you are wondering i'm drinking pellegrino lemonata really good stuff really recommended uh, but yeah I'm, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a plethora of uh, different little you know shots that i've done uh, I even did in the eve later in the evening, so it's a little bit of a darker motif, but still. Uh, I actually I remember I had put on my bicycle, actually, a holder for the little Panasonic lipstick action cam. But I thought, well, it uses a standard tripod screw, so why not just put the Sony and see how it handles motion in that aspect. So yeah, that's a little bit it. Some of the sites that I have shown you here is the the Swan Pond, Swan Dammen. Uh, what else? Uh, a little bit of uh, Fyre Swan and so on. And a little bit of the park near the hospital. And um, yeah, it's a little bit of a plethora of scenes around Uppsala and I even went into the cathedral with the camera so that's a little bit of the plethora of scenes that I have filmed with this and uh, one thing that I really noticed is that I had it on normal uh, what is it called now uh, yeah it has a built-in two mode uh, vibration reduction First you have normal, which was what I had it on, and then there is also dynamic. And uh, when listening to a lot of reviewers of this camera, it seems like dynamic is the one that you should be a little bit wavy of, because while the normal, I, as I've understood, is an internal mechanical image stabilization system, the dynamic one uses a little bit of a, digital zoom so you both use a little bit of the sensor area and a mechanical system a hybrid of those two in order to stabilize the shot and um, in my opinion that is actually that you're losing a bit of resolution and a little bit of sharpness so that's basically it oh and also finally um, i did some correction and a little bit of boosting and so on in uh, Adobe Lightroom 6. There is a little bit of a, a fairly unknown cheat you can do. If you load in a video file into Lightroom, I'm using Lightroom 6, if you load in a video file in that program, what you can do is that you take a screenshot from the video clip and you can edit that screenshot. And with this, uh, uh, the the uh, codec that this camera uses, you have a very good uh, ability to take a snapshot from the video file that you can actually uh, edit like any other still file in Lightroom. And then you can apply those settings to the entire video clip. So that's a little bit of a cool workaround in uh, Lightroom, uh, in my opinion. But I think that's all for now, and uh, as always, this is Tobias Bergstrom from TB Photo X 1.5 to FX, and I'd like to see you guys in the next video. And as always, please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. So, cheers!
Thank you.